speaker for today. It's no other than Pastor
The problem is, we make these promises year after year after year, and sometimes it feels frustrating that we look back on the past year and we find ourselves frustrated with all the promises and resolutions we have made. This morning, I would like for us to look, to look on how we can start right this year with Christ. And I would like to introduce a woman who, like us, desire to start right Okay. God wants us to live an abundant life that is pleasing to Him. Okay? And we need to understand that God is far more interested in our future than He is with our past. Now, this woman, you're, you're, you're very familiar with this woman. She is the Samaritan woman. And I'd just like to summarize uh, her conversation with the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? It was the sixth hour and for the Jews, the first hour starts at 6 a.m. in the morning. So it was noon time when the Lord Jesus Christ arrived in a, in a town in Samaria called Sychar. And in this town, uh, there was a well. It was called the Jacob's Well. And uh, the Lord Jesus Christ sat down and uh, a woman came to fetch some water. Mag-iigib ng tubig ng babae. Sa well in the afternoon, napaka-init. And when the Lord Jesus Christ saw the woman, the Samaritan woman, the Lord Jesus Christ said, Would you please give me a drink of water? And the Samaritan woman answered, I am a Samaritan, you are a Jew. Why do you ask? Just to give a brief background, for the Jews, they didn't want to associate themselves with Samaritans because they viewed Samaritans as half-bloods. And they viewed them as uh, of a lower... Uh, they are human beings than themselves. I don't know if, if that's even possible, but that's how the Jews viewed the Samaritans. They were of pure blood. They were not pure Jews. They were half, half. Okay, so the woman was asking, you are a Jew. I am a Samaritan. Why do you ask? And the Lord said, the Lord Jesus Christ said, if you knew whom you are asking, you would have asked for the living water. And the Samaritan woman looked at the Lord Jesus Christ and said, you have nothing to get water with, and the, the well is deep. What is this living water? And the Lord Jesus Christ answered, The living water, everyone who drinks of this well will thirst again. But the water that I give, the living water that I give, anyone who will receive it, he or she will never thirst again. And so, the woman, the Samaritan woman said, Okay, please give me some living water. And the Lord Jesus Christ replied, Go fetch your husband. The Samaritan woman said, I have no husband. The Lord Jesus Christ said, Yes, that's true. You had five husbands, and the man you're living now with isn't really your husband. The Samaritan woman said, I see that you are a prophet. Why is it that Samaritans say we worship here on this mountain and the Jews worship in Jerusalem? So, nag-shift ka agad yung topic. But the Lord Jesus Christ answered her and said, There will come a time when we will be worshiping not on this mountain or on that mountain, but we will be worshiping the Father in spirit and in truth. And the Samaritan woman said, The Messiah who knows all these things will explain all of this when he comes. And finally, the Lord Jesus Christ answered, I am he. Now, brothers and sisters in the Lord, I'd like for us to take a closer look at the life of the Samaritan woman. And I would like for us to glean the principles of how we are to start this new, this, uh, new year. Starting right with Christ. Now, I propose five points with 30 minutes each. So now we will be here until 8 o'clock, right? When I was a young preacher, I used to listen to older preachers 
and they were going on and on and on, taking their time. And I promised to myself, I said, when I will become a preacher, I will keep my messages very short. But sad to say, the more you get experience in preaching, the more you want to add a lot of things that are not in your outline. So please, my wife is here, and we both believe in signs and wonders. Do you believe in signs and wonders? Yeah, she makes the signs, and I wonder. So she's here to keep, keep, keep this short. Okay, the first point is to stop making excuses. Please read with me. Stop making excuses. The Samaritan woman, when asked by the Lord Jesus Christ to bring her husband back with her, she gave a partial, truthful answer. But the Lord Jesus Christ already knew her situation and so revealed that uh, the situation of the Samaritan woman. The woman tried to, tried to shift the topic and so she talked about the uh, worship. Now, if we want a fresh start in life, we have to stop making excuses for our past and even our failures. We've got to stop blaming other people. We've got to stop blaming our parents. We've got to stop blaming people around us. We've got to stop blaming our boss. We've got to stop blaming our circumstances. And to really look and to stop seeing ourselves as the victim of our circumstances. Yes, other people can hurt us, other people can harm us, and other people can scar us. But the only person that can allow these people to do these things to ourselves is none other than us. Nobody can ruin our life without our permission. We have a choice. In Proverbs, if you want a fresh start in life, we have to stop making excuses for our failures. In Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13, it says, A man who refuses to admit his mistakes can never be, what? Successful. But if he confesses and forsakes them, he gets another chance. It is hard for us to admit that we have done wrong. It is hard, it is very difficult for us to admit that we make mistakes. But unless we admit that we make mistakes, unless we admit that we make, we, we make mistakes and we admit our sin, we will never get another chance in. We, will not, we are not able to move forward in our life. What are the reasons why we fail? Now, I propose three things. The first is we don't prepare. We don't prepare for the problems that we will face in life. Was it raining when Noah built the ark? It wasn't raining when Noah built the ark. It was to rain 120 years after he started building the ark. But still, he prepared himself and his family. The second is we don't listen to others. We don't listen to good advice when it is offered. Why? Because we think we don't need it. We're talking about ego, E-G-O, which is an acronym for edging God out. When a person, when we think we know more than God, then we push him out of our life. The Bible says pride always leads to destruction. And the third cause of failure is that we give up too soon. Madali po tayo mag-give up. There are, we give up too soon. We want things to be instant in our life. We want things to be easy. We always look for the shortcut. And sometimes we learn from the experience of others. And we don't have to experience what they experience for us to learn. But there are some things in life that we need to go through in order for us to learn. In a, at first, if we don't succeed, well, welcome to the human race. A lot of us don't succeed at first. Very few people make it on the first try. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, it's been proven, would you read with me please? It's been proven that people And you know why? Because they pour out their energies 
They pour out their creativity in making up excuses instead of owning up to mistakes and failures. And what happens is that their energy is drained and they don't have anything left anymore. Wala na pong naiiwan sa kanilang lakas upang pag-isipan kung paano po ang magiging solution po nila sa mga problems po nila. So, stop making excuses. The second point is take a life inventory. Take a life inventory. The Samaritan woman, when she went out to fetch water, she went to fetch up water at the middle of the day. Now, logically speaking, if someone goes out in the heat, now we're talking about this is a uh, Middle East country, Israel or Jerusalem or uh, Samaria, so it, was, it would have been very hot. Why would this woman go out in the middle of the day to catch water? Well, as I said, she had this history of having five husbands previously and now the man he was living with, she was living with, with is not her husband. So she knew that she was the top of the town. Alam niya na siya yung pinag-uusapan. Kaya ayaw niyang makisalamuha sa ibang mga tao. Kasi nahihiya siya, natatakot siya, nakukustrate siya. She tried her best to make her life work, but she already had five husbands, and she had a, a live-in partner. Maybe she was thinking, what's the use of getting married? If marriage for me doesn't work. Now, some of you may have experienced, you know, a lot of things wherein we look at ourselves and say, what am I doing? Where am I right now? I have so many dreams in my life, and yet I'm still here. And it's really, really frustrating. And so this woman, after having gone through all these relationships, after having gone through all these desires, for her to have a new life, she was frustrated. Now, she needed to take, the Lord Jesus Christ took an inventory of her life for her. When we take an inventory of our life, we need to take, we need to evaluate all our experiences, whether good or bad. Sometimes, I, I, am a, uh, I play table tennis um, in, in the amateur level. And you know, whenever I lose, I always think, I always review my game and think, Where did, why did I lose? But rarely do you see someone, do you see an athlete, when he wins, di po ba, pag natatalo po tayo, pinag-isipan natin, saan ba akong natalo? O bakit akong natalo? But rarely do you see someone who wins, review his game and say, Where, why did I win? But you see, that's important. In life, we need to evaluate both the good and the bad. Now, there are four kinds of experiences that God used use to shape our lives. The first is He uses our personal experiences, our private experiences, the experiences that only we know about. Then He uses our educational experiences. He uses our spiritual experiences. It's a balance. And lastly, He uses our painful experiences to shape us. The last experience, which is the painful experiences, these are the things that we try to avoid. But in the end, these are the things that make us stronger. These are the things that shape us into a better person. And so we look at the life of the Samaritan woman and later we will find the truth in this. Samaritan woman? What will happen to the Samaritan woman? after the Lord Jesus Christ has taken an inventory of her life. Looking back this past year, looking back this past year, there are three things that we need to ask ourselves. The first is that, what have I learned? If we do not learn from our mistakes, if we do not learn from our failures, if we do not learn from the things that has brought us down, we will keep repeating these things even if we try to escape them. Even if we go to another country, even if we go to another company, even if we exchange our relationship with another relationship, if we haven't learned to address these mistakes and failures in life, our lives it will keep popping up. We need to ask ourselves, what have I learned? Ano may natutunan ko sa nakaraang taon? 
The second thing is, what are my assets? You know, we keep on focusing on the things that we do not have. But the Bible says, count our blessings. Do we have a supportive family? Do we have friends who really care about us? Do we have bosses? Is our boss someone who wants our career to go further? We need to take inventory of our assets. Why? Because these are things that can help us in our fresh start. Have I got some friends? Have I got a support group? Have I got the Lord? Have I got a church family? If you are here, then this is your church family. And together with their help, we can get a fresh start. And the last but not the least is, who can help me? Everyone who has reached a certain level of success had someone help him or her attain that success. Amen? Lahat po nang nagtagumpay sa buhay, meron po mga tao na nasa likuran po niyan. Totoo po ba? So we need to keep asking ourselves, who can help me? Huwag po tayo magkatubili, huwag po tayo mag-alimlangan na humiling po ng tulong. The third principle in starting right with Christ based on the, the life of the Samaritan woman is this. We need to act in faith. Remember, the first is stop making excuses. The second is take a life inventory. The third is to act in faith. Now, when the Samaritan woman asked for the living water offered by the Lord Jesus Christ, she acted in faith. Why? Because first, he was a man. And in their culture, a woman doesn't talk with a man, especially an unmarried woman. The second was that not only was he a man, he was a Jew. And Samaritans do not speak and converse and make communication with Jews. So this was the first time he met this man who was a Jew. But right away, because of what the Lord Jesus Christ revealed about her, she took an act or a step of faith. If we want to change anything in our life, it will take a lot of faith. If we want to change anything in our life, it will take faith. Jesus says in Jesus says, says this in Matthew chapter 9, he says, According to your faith, it will be done to you. This is a very simple statement, but it has a very powerful meaning. What are we expecting in life? The things that we expect in life, most often or not, will happen to us. And it's very sad because a lot of us grew up in families wherein our self-esteem wasn't actually bolstered positive, in a positive way. Galing tayo sa mga families na kung minsan hindi naman sinasadya pero lalo po tayo na down. Sasabihin ng mga magulang natin, sabihin ng mga teacher natin, ang bobo bobo mo. Walang mangyayari sa iyo, walang mangyayari sa buhay mo. And we, 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 these things, these negative things that we keep hearing from, from adults, from our parents, from our teachers, from those ahead of us, unknowingly, we, 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 we carry these things with us in our life. And it tends to drag us down. It tends to make our expectations lower. Okay? And so we, we get what we expect from life. In order for us to act in faith, it says here, according to your faith, it will be done to you. It means that we need to stop having a pity party. We need to stop feeling sorry for ourselves. We need to stop focusing on our negative, the negative aspects of our life. Of course, life is unfair. Whoever said it would be fair? We live in a sinful world. And so a lot of us look at our job and the people around us and you say, why are there certain people who you see sitting down but they get bigger salaries than I, who keeps doing the work for them. Diba? May mga ganang paisipan, lalo na nga po dito. And so we think, we, we start to pity ourselves, and we look at our life, and we, we regret a lot of things that we have done. We say, why did I do this? Why did I do that? Why did I say this? Why did I say that? 
There are a lot of things that when once done, we can undone. The stone that is thrown, what else? The words that are spoken. So we tend to regret a lot of things that we have done in our life. We keep thinking, why, why, why did I make this decision? I don't know if my wife looking at me right now would uh, say that, why did I marry this man? But really, hindi po ba? We look at our life and we tend to think of the things that we have done in the past and we keep, we cringe, you know? Say, bakit ko ginawa yan? Bakit ko nasabi yun? Bakit gano'n na naging decision ko? But it's, eh, nandito na eh. Nandito na tayo sa situation na to. So what should we do? We need to stop having a pity party and learn from the past we need to do, what we need to do is to learn from the past, act in faith for the future, and look to God for guidance. How can we get rid of fear of failure in our life? By faith. Next, we move on to the fourth. So the first, again, is stop making excuses. The second is take a life inventory. The third is act in faith. The fourth is refocus my thoughts. What does it mean to refocus our thoughts? Now, going back to the Samaritan woman, when when the Lord Jesus Christ revealed, when the Lord Jesus Christ took a life inventory of the Samaritan woman, the Samaritan woman immediately shifted the topic. She shifted the topic, pinalitan niya kaagad yung topic from yung buhay niya into, sabi niya, you are a prophet. Kasi alam mo itong mga bagay na ito. Now, why are we worshiping here and you say that it's better to worship in Jerusalem? But the Lord Jesus Christ took this and said, Samaritans worship what you do not know, but Jesus, that the Jews worship what we know. My question is, do we really know Christ? I'm not asking if we know about Him. I'm not asking if we know of Him. Now we can know of a person. Sometimes, our favorite actors and actresses, we learn about them through what? Through articles in magazines, through articles in Yahoo, what else? In Google. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but if we want to learn, if we want to know a person, what do we do? Do we just read about them? No, we don't read about them. We communicate directly. We talk directly to this person in order for us to know this person. <coughs> <coughs> Brothers and sisters in the Lord, a fresh start is not found in a new job, in a new position, or in a new company. A fresh start is not found in a new wife or husband. <coughs> A fresh start is only found in a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. We are encouraged to refocus our thoughts. Now take note, I didn't say priorities, I said thoughts. What is it about thoughts that are important? <coughs> in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 22, it says, Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. What does this mean? What does this mean? Could you please read the paragraph with me? morning and think of the day as something that is a burden to us, it will affect the way we feel. And the way we feel will affect the way we act towards other people. And so if you want to change the way, if, if you want to change the way we think, oh sorry, if you want to change the way we act, we need to change the way we think. We need to refocus our thoughts. 
<clears throat> and how, how are our thoughts refocused? Paano ba natin yung refocus ang ating kaisipan? In Psalms chapter 1 verse 1, the very first chapter and verse of the book of Psalms says, Can you read please with me? Now these are two things that everyone wants in life. We want to be happy and we all want to succeed. Tama po ba? But the order is, in order for us to be successful, we first need to be happy. The more we meditate on God's Word, the happier and more successful we will be in our Christian life. It is a promise from God Himself. Now, remember <clears throat> that the Bible doesn't promise if you read this book, you will be happy and successful. No. If you listen to this book, like a sermon, you will be happy and successful. But rather, it says, if you meditate on it, you will be happy and successful. The last but not the least is, okay, we start to stop making excuses, take a life inventory, act in faith, refocus my thoughts, and the last but not the least is to trust God. Now, going back to the Samaritan woman, she said, she believed. Naniwala po siya, when the Messiah, when the Lord Jesus Christ, He said, the Messiah will come and He will be able to explain all of these things. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am He. And right away, because of what the Lord has revealed to her about her life, she said, she trusted the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust God to help us succeed. Depend on Him. We don't depend on ourselves. We've already proven that we can't wait on our own. Time and time again, if we depend on ourselves, we will, in some capacity, fail. And if we say, I will try harder, sometimes, try harder is not the solution. Because try, try harder, doing the same thing over and over again, is the definition of insanity. You know what insanity is? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Ulit-ulit natin, inuulit ang isang bagay, try harder. But at the end, it will still come out with the same result. Brothers and sisters, in the Lord, in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, it says, You will not succeed by your own strength or power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Brothers and sisters, in the Lord, what happened to the Samaritan woman? Was her life changed? Was she able to get a new and fresh start? In verses 40 to 42, I'll not read it to you, but I will, I will relate it to you. What happened was that she gained confidence and she went out into the village, into the town, where as previously she was hiding. She went out and she proclaimed and she called her neighbors and said, Neighbors, come and listen to this man. He has revealed so many things about me and he is claiming to be the Messiah. Could he be the Messiah? Was her life transformed? Did she get a new, a new and fresh start in her life? She did. Immediately, just like that. She gained confidence to go out. She had compassion for her neighbors who previously were looking down on her. And the neighbors came and the townspeople came and they begged the Lord Jesus Christ to stay for two more days. And then finally they said, in verse 41, and because of these words, many more became believers. They, they said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, all of us who are wishing for a fresh start this, this year, this coming year, the Lord Jesus Christ has a lot of good things in store for us, blessings. Why? Because when He blesses us, we give Him thanks and glory. Every blessing that we receive will always return back to us giving glory and honor and praise and adulation and thanksgiving to Him. But what we need to do is first to stop making excuses, to take a life inventory, to act in faith, to refocus our thoughts and to trust in God. That is how we S-T-A-R-T start our life right for this year 
Shall we bow down in prayer? Father God, we are grateful that once again you have reminded us, but not only reminded us, you have been focused, you have focused us. As we have meditated on your word and on the life of the Samaritan woman this afternoon, we are encouraged, our, our minds and our hearts are open. Lord, there is nothing impossible with you, and there is nothing impossible for you. For you have said in your word, that even the heart that is made of stone, you can con convert into a heart that is made of flesh. Kahit ang puso ba to, o Panginoon, kahit ang pong baguhin at kahit ang palitan ng puso ng naman, na tumitibok lamang para sa ito. A heart of flesh that beats passionately and desires you above all. Father God, thank you for revealing us to get us and reminding us that we can never start right unless we start right with you. So help us, Lord God, to stop making excuses and to trust you. This is our prayer with much thanks to you for this coming year. This most precious thing in all of God's children said, Amen. Amen.